The only thing we can do is get ready for tomorrow, right? Sell side bias, you can see. You can see spies, you can see everything. NVIDIA, spies, they're going like one by one. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap up show. Happy Monday. Hope everybody had a, a good trading day. As always, again, I always appreciate uh, all your support. If you could kindly, uh, you know, click click on the like button and subscribe to the channel in case you haven't done so already. Uh, thank you very much for giving us the heads up here. It looks like uh, the weekend video had a little bit of low volume. Uh, again, we always wanna get the feedback so we can improve uh, improve the audio. Obviously, I have nothing to do with that. So all we can do is just give it to our guys. They do a great job. And hopefully tonight's video will be a-okay, right? A-okay. So let's talk about the tape, right? So if you watch the weekend video, uh, we talked about a scenario of a potential two-sided market, right? Um, I thought what the Bulls did last week was super important, um, was very, very organic. After a 10% move on the CPI, they came back to those bottom levels, just kind of a little, little history lesson. On Tuesday, we reclaimed the five-day moving average, and just like everything else in the PS60 theory, stocks trade from supply to supply. So we took out the supply here and stopped right here, and we talked about the level of upside bias over this 289.50, they got rejected twice. However, there was a flip side, right? And that flip side was, uh, well, what happens if they lose the bottom range? And when you woke up this morning, uh, you saw the futures down, not a lot, but you saw the futures down. And apparently uh, there is a little bit of civil unrest going on in uh, China, all across China uh, with the whole COVID restrictions and so forth and so on. And then slowly but surely, there was a pretty big battle pretty much all day uh, below the area that we talked about. If you watched the video over the weekend, we talked about this uh, 285.79's level. So the craziest part about what, what happens in the market is things switch on a dime. They turn on a dime very, very quickly. Usually it has something to do with either a geopolitical event, uh, some sort of financial, um, financial implication, and the market doesn't like that, right? It doesn't like uncertainty. It doesn't like, um, you know, violence. It doesn't like... Uh, things that we can't control or can't predict. And slowly but surely the whole day, uh, there was a big battle. If you guys you know, pretty much saw, literally the whole day today was taking place right around here. This whole battle here, on, uh, roughly in, the, in this 284.60s level on the queues. Now, why was that important? Because this 264.60s level, right? The two, uh, excuse me, the 284.60s level is where the market broke out. You, that, that's where the market kind of broke the downtrend a couple of days ago and reclaimed the five day and had that two day run. So it was very, very impossible. We wanted to give the bulls kind of the benefit of the doubt pretty much through the whole morning that they can, re, you know, they can sit hold, reclaim, and defend that level and start moving higher. And at one point they did, right? At one point they did, uh, the queues started bouncing from that 8460s level. And, you know, the NASDAQ was, you know, it got up to, I think it got up to as high as almost 87. It was a beautiful bounce, like a two and a half, three dollar bounce. And we said, okay, that's it. Matt, now everything is gonna start to wake up. Before that happened though, this is I, again, while we say we always play the game, we don't know, we can anticipate, we can think, we can, have a, we can have an opinion, but the point is until it actually happens, it doesn't happen. And as you kept on going through the day, things were, were sitting right in the middle of their ranges, right? So going into today's session, you know, pretty much we had, what, 100% long bias, right? So once they, once they opened below that level that we talked about, on, on the weekend video, this whole 285 70s level and started building or started fighting uh, Battlefront and this 284 uh, 60s level, we knew right away it wasn't gonna be that easy. And we sat there and we sat there. The morning, you know, morning gave us, you know, a quick bounce on Amazon. Uh, Amazon was the kind of a, uh, on the riding the coattails of a Shopify, pretty decent number. Uh, for Black Friday, that got sold off very, very quickly. But it was a decent, you know, decent little bounce on Amazon. Uh, we talked about Tesla over the weekend. It, it finally, you know, it finally confirmed, right? Confirmed above this uh, 286 level and stopped perfectly. And this is why we say how, how cool technical analysis. Technical analysis doesn't stop randomly. It stopped right on this Bollinger Band, which was co coincidentally the high 
from last Friday's pre-market level. So other than that, we just sitting there and just sitting there. And then all of a sudden, you know, the queues were fighting, they were fighting and fighting. And then finally, they just gave it all up, right? Gave it all up in the last hour. And now, you know, we have a little bit of a different narrative, right? Now we have, we turn around and try to break down the day and you say to yourself, well, what happened here? You know, why was this whole civil unrest on China such a big deal and impacted the market, right? We deal with COVID headlines uh, on and off now for, for since March of 2020. What made today more exaggerated, right? Because if you look at the final numbers, the Dow got hit for 500 points. Again, not small, not big, but enough to kind of raise your eyebrows. When you look at China, right? Think about what's the common denominator in most international companies. They all have plants in China, right? So you got the semiconductors, you got Apple, right? You got every, everything under the sun has exposure to, 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 uh, to China. And when you have a scenario of that we kind of talk, talked about a couple of minutes ago, civil unrest, right? You don't know what's gonna happen. You're all, factories decide to you know, start to close. They start to temporarily shut down because they don't know what's gonna happen. They don't know where this civil unrest is gonna happen. And when you look at the names that were exposed, directly exposed, especially in technology, you can see the weakness come out very, very quickly, right? Apple, right? Apple, Apple lost the whole bottom range here, okay? Lost the whole bottom range, not just the five, 10 day moving average. It lost the 50 day moving average on this news. That's a big deal, right? That really is a big deal. So you got one more day of confirming today's channel. You can see how much room you have. They were coming with some pretty big size today uh, for the weekly 140 puts. Again, you know, is this a is this a, a, a forecast of what they believe is going to happen? Is it a guess or is this you know finally a stock that got technical damage and now it's going to confirm? We'll see. Look at the semiconductor stocks, right? Look at Nvidia, for example, right? Nvidia again lost the five-day moving average. Same thing that it confirmed, right? Got above the five-day just a couple of days ago and went on a nice, you know, a nice run of of nearly, you know, of nearly ten points. Well, now it gave up the five and ten-day moving average. Not a not a good sign as well. And again, there's a lot of stocks. If you go through tonight's watch list, you'll see a lot of stocks giving up, you know, giving up uh, their their bottom channels. But the, the the most concerning part about this is. If you look, take a really deep step back, right? And you turn around and say, well, everything was going on technically, right? Technically is still considered by bias. And the reason why I say that is we are still above the 50 day moving average. And now we've been above the 50 day moving average of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That's two weeks. Tomorrow will be nearly two and a half weeks. So overall, overall, without a, a, without a macro complete technical damage, we're still above the 50 day. It does not mean you cannot take advantage of the downside channels, just like we had here. Remember that 10% run? We talked about if the market starts losing the five-day moving average, we could take advantage of a downside shift. That's exactly what we're looking at today. And if you look at the cues, the big area is still going to be this whole 280, let's just call it 280 and a half level. You see how many times it held 280 and a half, held it once, held it twice, held it three times, right? So write this down, guys. Any close, right? Any close or any confirmation below 280 and a half on the queues, well, then we're gonna test the 50-day moving average. And then things become, well, let's give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Then it becomes, well, let's see if the bears can reclaim back the 50-day moving average. And again, if you see our history for the last year, We've spent 80% of our, our, our trading year below the 50-day moving average. And you can see what happens here below that blue line, right? There's a lot of damage. So the last thing the bulls want to do is give up this 50-day moving average. But the most important part before we put the cart in front of the horse, they have to defend this 280 and a half level. If the bulls continue to defend this 280 and a half level, things are okay, right? You can still make some money on the short side. And that's why, again, I have some longs for tomorrow. I have some shorts for tomorrow uh, on, on, on the radar. But more important, we have to know our levels. And if they do lose this 280 and a half level, especially on the close, then we will test uh, the 50-day moving average. But look at technology, right? Look at technology and look at the spies, right? Look at the spies. Again, spies had a did a great job. Remember that breakout only from Tuesday that the, the spies reclaimed uh, the two, the 398 level, right? That had a really, really big move to 403. They gave it up today, right? That's not good, folks. That's not good. And we closed below the five day. So if the Q, if you see this double bottom here, right? You see this 95 level, right? That was the low from November the 22nd. 95 was also the low today. It starts losing 95. We're going to go right back down to this 91, 90 level. So again, line in the sand and the spies, that, that 395 level, line in the sand on the Qs is that, uh, is that uh, what is it, 280, 
280 and a half, right? So we're set up here. So we definitely could trade around those levels. There's a lot of really good looking setups for tomorrow, uh, especially to the downside. Okay, we're watching for confirmation. Like I said all the time, people ask me all the time, what I think is gonna happen next week, next month, next year, I have no idea, okay? I have, nobody knows it. Only thing we could do, and, I, and again, I, this is a rotation. This is, I, I kind of repeat this every single day uh, like a broken record. The only thing we can do is get ready for tomorrow, right? Sell side bias, you can see. You can see spies, you can see everything. NVIDIA, spies, they're going like one by one. Apple, look how much room you have on Apple, right? If this thing confirms, look how much room you have on Apple. Does that mean it's automatically gonna happen? No, but at least again, don't we need to prepare for it? And if they start uh, confirming today's channels tomorrow, then yeah, we will get another downside move. So it's very, very important. Uh, the bulls hold those levels that we have. Uh, that we just illustrated a couple of minutes ago, both on the SPYs, uh, both on uh, the Qs. But one ETF we definitely want to keep an eye on, and I think this will be uh, the telltale sign for tomorrow, is the semiconductors, right? Semiconductors, you know, you can make an argument have the biggest manufacturing exposure to China. And you can see here, how, you see how three times it held this level here, right? You see it three times it held this rising 10-day moving average. Oh, it's, it's not even the 10-day, excuse me. 150 day moving average if the semiconductors start to confirm down there's 150 day moving average there's six seven points in the move and that's when everything in the nasdaq 100 will kind of be correlated with the smhs because again the semiconductors um, do make a huge part weight uh, on the QQQs, so it's be very, very interesting to watch. So I will definitely be watching uh, the semiconductors tomorrow for uh, any uh, continued weakness. I'm definitely watching for spies tomorrow for the consumer cyclicals. We have multinational uh, corporations uh, in you know that manufacturing plants in China, right? So far today, they've been they held up pretty well, right? The Kimberly Clarks of the world, right? So far they're holding up. But if they start cracking, and these consumer cyclicals start cracking, then you have not only just uh, uh, technology cracking, then you have them spilling over to the broader market spill. So it's gonna be very, very interesting tomorrow. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of names that I'm watching for tomorrow. Uh, I definitely like, you know, I definitely like Apple. We already looked at the chart. Uh, I'm watching Meta. I wanna keep an eye, look how tight Meta is. Meta starts losing this channel here. There'll be some downside. <sighs> look, I'm gonna regret it. Every single time I look at Zoom, I get disappointed. I'm gonna regret it, right, for even mentioning it. But damn it, man, look at this chart, right? Look at this chart here. We have a distribution that's going all the way back to October. If Zoom loses, I, I gotta take a shot at this thing, right? Tomorrow, right, we, we gotta take a shot. If this thing starts losing the October ranges, I think there's a, there's a shot of the next leg down. So I wanna definitely keep an eye on it. Will it confirm tomorrow? God only knows, but I, I, I'm gonna give it one more shot. That's it, I'm going cold turkey after that. God forbid I, I trade this thing, I lose money on Zoom tomorrow, you're dead to me. Hopefully that doesn't happen. So we're watching that. And a name that I started watching a couple of days ago that is interesting to me, looks like a little bit of a slow mover, but a name like uh, LITE looks interesting if it could confirm its earnings lows down. So that's it, right? That's it. Uh, the only one last little announcement today is last couple of hours to take advantage of our slash Black Friday uh, Cyber Monday. You only have a couple of hours. So if you are on the fence or you would try to uh, envision yourself trading pivots, again, it's a little bit of a unique way of trading. It's, I promise you, it's not for everybody. But if you, uh, if you like the process and it's something you are considering, uh, take advantage over the next couple of hours and I will see you guys tomorrow in the webinar. Guys, God bless, stay patient, stay loved, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take